So in today's experiment, uh, we're going uh, to look at the tensile strength of uh, rock samples. However, in the case of this experiment, uh, we're going to conduct what we call indirect uh, Brazilian tensile uh, test. So in the case of indirect tests, basically, we're uh, doing, um, we're causing one mode of failure to extract another mode of failure. So in this uh, particular case, we're going to apply a load in compression and we're going to calculate uh, tension from uh, this experiment. So uh, this, uh, the reason you know just why we're using uh, the indirect test, you know, just versus direct uh, tensile strength test is in most cases, well, because it is much easier to obtain uh, the desired, you know, just uh, uh, value as in this case we're interested in the tensile strength of rocks, you know, just from the indirect test than from the direct test. So uh, uh, the reason, you know, just why it is much easier in this case to obtain tensile strength uh, uh, of rock sample, you know, just then uh, during the direct test is that uh, in the direct test uh, we basically have uh, to uh, take a, a rock sample, we have to uh, glue uh, the uh, uh, steel platens um, to the ends of uh, the rock sample on both sides and then many times and then we're going to pull you know just uh, those attachments here till the sample is going to fail and we're going to record the tensile strength of uh, the sample however many times uh, what's going to happen is, you know, just instead, you know, just of uh, sample breaking, you know, just uh, somewhere in the middle, so we are, can record, you know, just the uh, tensile strength, you know, just of the sample, the sample is going to break, you know, just at the uh, glue joint between the steel platens and uh, the rock sample, and we are essentially recording uh, strength of the glue joint, not you know just the strength you know just of the samples. So many times you know just we are um, we have to uh, repeat you know just this experiment, and it usually takes a long time for the glue to achieve uh, full strength. So uh, it's not going to break you know just uh, on the glue joint. So the experiment is uh, uh, conducted on uh, rock core samples. We're, we're preparing the samples by uh, cutting them into uh, disks. And uh, basically, according to the uh, ASTM standard, the thickness, uh, the ratio between the thickness or length of the sample to diameter of the sample has to be within 0 0.2 to 0 0.75 uh, length to diameter. So we're going to measure first the uh, diameter of this sample, three millimeters. We can calculate the average by rotating one third of rotation. So the next measurement is 69.75. The third one is 69.75. So uh, we're pretty consistent. And we're going to measure the length of the sample or thickness of the sample. 29.18. And we're going to rotate the sample by um, one third of uh, full circle rotation. 29.28. And the third one is 29.36. So in the next step, we're going to uh, place uh, our sample um, in the loading frame. Um, in this particular case, since uh, we're measuring uh, tensile strength uh, of uh, rock samples, we can use uh, fairly small uh, capacity 
loading frame and we're going to apply a constant load so our test is going to last between 1 to 10 minutes so depending on the size of the sample and strength of the sample you know just uh, we have to recalculate uh, the uh, loading rate now we're using a special uh, holder to uh, make sure that uh, this sample is not going to slip uh, during the test uh, before the failure is going to occur um, so in, in a moment we are going to uh, see failure of the uh, sample so we are going to uh, hear um, some uh, loud bang and uh, you are going to see uh, if everything uh, goes to plan uh, vertical fracture or fractures going uh, through uh, the center of the sample So after the experiment, we're going to look uh, how the sample failed. So um, if we look, you know, just at uh, the failed sample, we're going to notice uh, uh, vertical fractures. Uh, so the mode of failure was failure in tension. And that's uh, what we're looking to obtain. And I'm going to pull out, you know, just this sample. We're going to see that uh, basically this sample uh, split it in half so it failed in tension so we, uh, we have recorded the uh, maximum load at which you know this sample failed uh, knowing uh, uh, the maximum load and the dimensions of the sample we can recalculate the tensile strength of uh, this particular sample. Now this test uh, is uh, indirect test of measuring uh, uh, tensile strength uh, and uh, usually when we're dealing with indirect tests um, we have to make sure that uh, we have you know just uh, um, fairly large number of uh, samples tested uh, to basically obtain meaningful uh, average so it is uh, recommended uh, to at least test uh, 10 samples to obtain meaning meaningful average uh, for uh, tensile strength of uh, rocks so basically you know just uh, in order to satisfy this requirement, we would have to conduct, you know, this another um, ten tests. But uh, uh, many times it is worth uh, doing that um, because, uh, in most cases, um, we're going to get uh, perfect uh, failure in tension of the uh, uh, tested uh, rock samples.